ceremony is a picture of the Trinity. We have a lover, a love, and a spirit of love. Matt and Christy are so glad that you're here today. We want to ask the Lord's blessing on this day, so let's bow as we pray. Father, we thank you for this precious couple that you've uh, ordained to this day, taken care of them, and providentially brought them together. And Lord, that you've knit their hearts together for the gospel. Lord, we're so thankful for them. We pray today, Lord, that you would be exalted. We thank you for their lives. We thank you that they're joining their lives together. In Jesus' name, amen. Matt and Christy are so glad that y'all are here today to celebrate with them this wonderful, wonderful marriage ceremony as a picture of their love for each other, I'd like to read 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. It says, Love is patient, love is kind, and is not jealous. Love does not brag and is not arrogant. Love does not act unbecomingly, it does seek its own, it's not provoked, does not take into account the wrong suffer, does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. And so that is our prayer for y'all today. And so we ask this in the spirit of love. Who gives away this woman to you? I do. Amen.
I shared something with um, the folks at church yesterday. It just came out. I didn't mean to. But I want to share it just briefly uh, this morning. Uh, what a, what a joy-filled day this is for all of us. Amen. And we're here to worship the Lord Jesus. Um, but because uh, it's my daughter and because Matt's such a wonderful man, my joy is overflowing. And I'm pretty sentimental. So pray for all of us. But uh, every, every Sunday morning, I'm always in the kitchen before the rest of the family. And Christy comes down and she leaves to go to church before the rest of the family because she's in the, the music portion of the worship. And she asked me to put her, her cello, or at least I guess I volunteer most of the time, uh, her cello in the car because it's big and bulky. And yesterday morning, uh, I was upstairs. Our routine was a little off. And she came up and she said, Dad, do you want to put the cello in the car this last time? From now on, Matt, you're going to be doing that. And it's a joy to serve those you love. And when you serve Christy, you are a picture of the Lord Jesus. And that's what we are. And the Bible says that a man shall leave his father and mother, and he shall cleave unto his wife. That word cleave means to pursue with passion with dedication, with diligence, and it means to be faithful. Cleave unto your wife. And the Bible tells us that when God created that first couple, Adam and Eve, that, uh, of course, it wasn't good for man to be alone, and that's why He gave Eve to Adam. And the two were one flesh, and they were naked, and they were unashamed. And the reason that they were unashamed is because sin had not entered into the picture. We all know that Adam disobeyed the Lord, sin entered into the world, spread to all of his posterity. We know the ugly results, we call it the fall. And all of creation groans waiting for its redemption, even as men and women need redemption in the Lord Jesus Christ. And not to get too graphic, I, I don't think I've ever talked about this at a wedding. And I don't know why I'm talking about it today, but listen and you'll, you'll figure it out, I guess. But nakedness is a picture of sin and shame. It's a picture of our shame before a holy God. Not just the fact of being unclothed, but the fact that we've sinned against the holy God. And the universe is filled with symbols. And our culture flaunts their shame before a holy God, and they don't even know it. But God is also gracious, and God is merciful, and God sent His Son into the world to die for guilty sinners. He sent the Lord Jesus Christ to take away our sin and to take away our shame. He did that by dying on the cross, by paying for our sin, he took our sin upon Himself, those who know Him, those who love Him. And because He had no sin of His own, He died because of our sin, but because He had no sin of His own, He was raised up. And now He's ruling and reigning in His universe, and He's gathering in His children. And marriage, as we read the Word of God, is a picture of what Jesus is doing. It's a picture of of Jesus pursuing His bride. He sets His love upon His bride and He pursues her and He redeems her. Christy wrote um, her mom and I <clears throat> a letter. And we read it this morning. Hope that's okay. <laughs> and of course the tears were flowing. It was beautiful. She was thanking us for all kind of stuff. And um, we don't deserve it, but nevertheless... But one of the things that she said in the letter was this, that we've been her, um, and I guess, I guess me symbolically, but us together, we've been her primary source 
of uh, provision, protection, care, all of those things. But now the roles are changing. Her mother and I, our roles are going to be very different. Going to be good, but going to be different. And you, humanly speaking, will be her source primarily. Her primary source of love and protection and spiritual guidance and care. Those things. That role is now yours. But here's my last piece of spiritual guidance before the roles completely and finally change. Put Jesus on display in your marriage every day, as I've talked about. Trust Jesus, trust one another. Don't give each other any reason not to trust one another. Love one another, serve one another, enjoy one another. And whatever you do, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it unto the glory of God. Let's pray. Father, we love you, we praise you, we pray that you would bless this couple and help them to live to your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. declare Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and request His grace, guidance, and glory as you undertake the role and responsibilities as a husband. I do. Do you acknowledge that Christ is the head of every man? I do. Do you accept the full responsibility to be the head of your wife as Christ is the head of the church? I do. Do you promise to love her as Christ loved the church and gave Himself for her? I do. Do you pledge to take the lead in spiritual matters so as to pray with your wife, for your wife, and to be faithful to her always? I do. Do you commit yourself to provide for your family in the best way you can? I do. Do you recognize that there are differences in the two of you, and for that reason you will strive to understand her, accept her uniqueness, and cherish her as a fellow heir of the grace of life? I do. Then repeat after me. I, Matt, I, Matt. Take, thee, Christy, take thee, Christy, to be my wedded wife, to, be my wedded wife, to have and to hold, to have and to hold from, this day forward, from this day forward, for better or for worse, for, better or for, worse for, richer or for, poor, for richer or for poor, in sickness and in health, in and in health to love and to cherish, to love and to cherish as, long as, we both shall live, as long as we both shall live, according to God's holy ordinance, according to God's holy ordinance in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christy, do you declare Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and request His grace, guidance, and glory as you undertake the role and responsibilities as a wife? I do. Do you promise to submit to your husband as to the Lord? I do. Do you acknowledge that although marriage is a shared privilege, certain responsibilities and obligations are your husband's alone? Do you pledge to create a home environment that is clean, pure, and peaceful? I do. Do you recognize that there are differences in the two of you, and for that reason you will strive to understand your husband, accept his uniqueness, and cherish him as a fellow heir of the grace of life? I do. 
Do you realize that your husband needs to know that you support him, pray for him, and seek only what is right in your relationship? I do. And do you promise to encourage spiritual maturity in your husband's life and seek it in your own? I do. Then you may repeat after me. I, Christy, take thee, Matt. I, Christy, take thee, Matt. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. According to God's holy ordinance. According to God's holy ordinance. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We have a ring. I hold in my hand the ring. Rings are symbolic as well. Symbol of authority, ownership, purity. And when rings are exchanged between a husband and a wife, um, a number of ideas are always present, that ownership. The Bible actually says, in a very real sense, you own one another. You're, you are not your own, you're His. You're not your own, you're hers. And you both belong to Christ. Acceptance, as I said a little bit earlier, trust, purity, the purity of the gold, the, 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 the purity of your love for God and for one another, the unending circle, a token of your vows. And so we give and receive the rings to symbolize all of these things. I can slip it on her finger. Matt, repeat after me. I give you this ring as a symbol of my love, commitment, and responsibility to you. With this ring, I thee wed in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Do you, Christy, receive this ring as a symbol of His love for you, and will you wear it because of that love? I will. Put that on His finger. Christy, repeat after me. I give you this ring, I give you this ring as a symbol of my love, as a symbol of my love commitment, commitment, and responsibility to you, to you. With, this ring, with this ring, I thee wed, I thee wed in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Do you, Matt, receive this ring as a symbol of her love for you, and will you wear it because of that love? I will. And let's pray one more time. Father, again, thank you. In your great providence, in your grace and mercy, you have brought these two together, Matt and Christy, and you've joined them their hearts, you've knit their hearts together in love. May you continue to do that always and may they glorify you in all that they do. May they love you more and more and indeed one another more and more every day. In Jesus' name, amen.
by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, I now pronounce you husband and wife. What God has joined together, let no one dare to separate. Matt, you may kiss your bride. Now present, now present to you, Mr. and Mrs. Matthew Johnson. Thank you.